Welcome everybody to this YouTube video. Um, and in today's video, I'm gonna get right to the point um, just because I wanna talk about this shoe. Um, and this was a unexpected release for me. I did not know it was going to be releasing until I actually received an email from, I don't know if it was Pro Direct Soccer or somewhere, somewhere I, I got an email and they were talking about this was being released on the day. And uh, I checked Nike right away. Obviously, I'm gonna check there first. And um, nothing was up and I was bummed out. Um, I did not know nothing about the shoe being released. I did not know anything like that. Um, and then I kept checking and then it was on the Nike website. Um, so uh, I was able to get it at a discount actually. Um, from the normal 200 down to 120 you want to do the math there um, but yeah so um, let me tell you really quick about the shoe so the shoe only released in a size 9 I don't know if the camera is probably too far away to pick that up but only a size 9 women's 10 and a half as you can see right there um, they released only 19 well 1971 um, because it was released in 1971 so that's why they used um, that many pairs. I was, I read that it they are numbered individually. Um, uh, it comes with a few things with it. I'm gonna talk about that and show you guys when I open up the box. Um, but yeah, basically, what if you don't know what this is, they changed the name to the Nike, just the Nike, um, and it was Nike's first ever attempt, and I say attempt um, of a soccer shoe because um this shoe apparently failed miserably it was made for the world cup um of mexico 1970 which is funny because okay i'm i may be biased but i've always felt that um you know uh nike always starts something they they do something first they innovate first and then other companies not necessarily copy but they kind of steal off of off, off of Nike. Now, what I mean by that, this was obviously made in 1970, and then what did you have later in, in 19 was it 82? The Copa Mundial was released. Um, Adidas released the Copa Mundial for the 1982 World Cup. Kind of goes hand in hand, I would say. Um, but yeah, so let's um, open up the box again. Like I said, this at the time failed miserably. Um, it was only retailed at $17, about $16.95. So yeah, I don't know what people expected or if they thought it was gonna be a great shoe. As we know now, Nike's a huge giant in the footballing world, soccer world. Um, so this was their first attempt. Um, didn't do so well in wet or cold conditions, which you know in Europe, soccer's played in wet and cold conditions. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was I'm, I'm glad that they tried it and they stuck with it because now we have some pretty amazing boots so with that being said let's open this up and right away you get this kind of old school um lettering papering that kind of tells you about the shoe and eh, nothing nothing really special i mean i'll read it to you it says it's a op upper comfortable fit long wearing toe cap soft upper reinforced eyelets nike pretty much the rundown of the shoe, how it's made. Um, one interesting thing is this is actually produced by Blue Ribbon Sports or when Nike was called Blue Ribbon Sports and it was made by a Canadian um, company that was actually based in Mexico, oddly enough, and then the World Cup was gonna be there. So it has a lot of ties between Canada, Mexico, um, the shoe, um, and yeah. So it wasn't quite Nike yet, but they did tell them to go ahead and put the swoosh on there um yeah as you can see it's actually one of the things here number four nike stripe white leather adds attractive reinforcement and if you didn't know this is made of a leather a calf skin i believe not kangaroo i don't think they had kangaroo leather yet um so i mean it is basically a retro shoe a throwback shoe however you want to call it um a remake but I think it's actually wearable. So they only made size nine, and I told you they only made the 1,971 pairs of it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at it. You got your 
regular outsole that it was, you know, back in the day, obviously. Um, nothing too fancy or nothing too special there. Um, and then it says, yeah, it says Mundial 70, obviously, and then Canada underneath it. Um, it says the same thing in this um, area here. And then on the bag, it says Materiales Corte Cuero Suela TPU, <laughs> TPU. Uh, and then, yeah, so, let me see. I This, no way, that can't be. That, that's, man, okay, I wasn't going to keep this shoe if I was being honest. But you can take this out, obviously, very thin. Um, and then the inside, you can, I don't know if you'll be able to see the inside, but <laughs> let me just tell you, this, this isn't a, a great shoe at all. But what makes me want to keep this shoe now, they say they're individually numbered. I have 1971. I have the 1,907, so I have the last shoe that was ever made of this. I, that makes me change my mind if I want to keep it or not. But honestly, if you're familiar with Nike shoes, this is basically just a Nike Cortez, and they put cleats on the bottom of it. If you look at the toe box, everything, this is just a Nike Cortez, which is which their famous running shoe at the time, the Nike, the Blue Ribbon Sports. Um, and they just put it on a, on a cleat and I mean, I would think this would be a little awkward, this area here, the toe box. Um, but yeah, but I'm just, I, I, that is crazy. Let me, let me just make sure, let me take out the other one, make sure it doesn't just, if it's, if that's true. Cause that, that would totally change my mind on if I wanted to keep them or not. Leather, it, it doesn't feel very premium. It doesn't feel nothing special. Um, again, like I said, if you're familiar with the Cortez, it feels just like a Cortez. Which the Nike Cortez was actually made, a quick little history lesson, uh, the Cor Nike Cortez was made because um, uh, they wanted to use the Aztec for that name, but Nike, or Adidas had already released a shoe with that title, so they went with Cortez. Oddly enough, if you if you know your Mexican history, um, the Cortez, Hernan Cortez is the one that came over from Spain and kind of put the Aztecs out of Mexico. So, I, but it's big in the Mexican culture in Los Angeles, the Cortez shoe. So, I don't know. Interesting stuff to me, maybe not to you. I'm just blabbing, so don't listen to me. But you have your other one. Uh, okay. All right. So that was just the 1971 was just the year. I do have number 529. So not so special, I guess. Eh. Do I want to keep them? I don't know. Uh, yeah. So there, again, you have, it's the same thing. And then it comes with this good luck, uh, Canada shoes, it says. And it says Guadalajara, Mexico. Little cute, cute, nice little thing to go along with the shoe, I guess. Uh, but yeah, again, this was a $17 shoe when it first released. Um, didn't hold up well. I do not know actually if they're to be, if they can be used. I don't think, I wouldn't think they'd be very comfortable to be used now. Um, thankfully, I do live in Florida where it's not very cold, but it is, it does get wet. So I don't know how long they would hold up. Uh, oddly enough, I was disappointed uh, when they only released size nine. I did not know that they were just releasing size nine. So when I saw that the 10 and a half was sold out, I was disappointed, but I saw that they sat. So I went ahead and just said, all right, let me get the size nine um, to review it. And when I took this out, I don't know just because I, I love shoes, um, but I said, let me try this on. Normally I would never try on a size nine, but I tried it on and it fit like a size 10. Maybe like the Copa Mundial where their sizing was just weird. If you know, if you wear Copas, then you know how weird the sizing is off and you have to wear like a whole size down. 
or sometimes one and a half if you really really want a tight fit so that this feels like that the size 10 because i looked at it and i'm like this looks big and i actually measured it to like my other cleats and it's almost like a size 10 it fit let's just say it fit it was a little tight but I imagine if it's leather, it might stretch eventually. So that kind of changed my mind a little bit on like, do I want to keep it or not? I don't know. It is a collector's piece, I guess, more than anything. Cause I really don't think, I really don't see me wearing them. Although I do love leather boots and I do love retro boots and, and, and all that. And this is a piece of history, but I just don't know if I'd want to use it or even try. Um, I don't know. You guys leave a comment down below and you think if I should do a play test with them or just try them out. Gosh, I don't I don't know what I want to do. But seeing that I my foot fit in there and it was a little tight in the toe area, but you can see it's a very narrow shoe, just like the Cortez. It's a very narrow shoe up in the front. Um it's kind of like a like a bowling shoe fit <laughs> if you've ever worn one of those. But yeah, it's a size nine. I don't, I, I, I don't know why it fits like a 10, a size 10. I have a couple temples in a size 10 that, you know, if I want a tighter fit that I wear and this fit just like that, I would say. So definitely not a size nine, I would say. And if someone wore this, if, if you have this shoe and you're a size nine and you got this, please let me know, did it fit you? Because that's very weird that I can't even wear a nine and a half in like sneakers, so I would I've never tried on a size nine soccer boot so the fact that my foot got in here and I could still wiggle my toes and I took out the insole and it fit even better so yeah if, if you bought the shoe and you're a size nine and it fit you big let me know also comment down below if I should keep it um, return it or display it or wear it so yeah those are the options but hopefully you like this video, you enjoyed it. Um, I went through the facts really quick. Um, there's plenty of facts that you can look up and, and find out more about this shoe if you need to. But yeah, hopefully you like this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.